Hey guys, welcome back to another video on C Sharp Collection series. This video contains everything that is required for you to get started with C Sharp dictionaries. We will see what is dictionary in C Sharp, how to declare it, different ways of adding and updating values to it, the optimum ways looking up items in a dictionary using keys and try get value method, and how to enumerate a dictionary. We will continue this topic to next video where I will show you how to use a custom type as key in a dictionary. But before all this, if you have not subscribed the channel, then consider subscribing it for all the exciting videos on C Sharp and other technologies. So with this, let's get started. Before learning how to declare a dictionary, let's understand what it is and when to use it. And for that, let's go back to our list example. Let me declare a list of a string to hold our months. Let's add the months. LST months dot add January. LST months dot add February and finally LST months dot add December. Do you remember how we retrieve values from a list? Yes, we can use indexing, right? If you want March, then index 2 and if you want April, then index 3. Now let's come to the point. Say you have a programming requirement where you have to store months in a way so that you can retrieve it via some code. Like JA should give you January and FE should give you February. Or your code could be int as well, one for January and two for February. Can you do this using a list? Definitely no, right? Because list does not provide any way to store such custom indexing values. That's where dictionary helps. Like list, dictionary is also a generic collection, but unlike list, which store a single value, the dictionary stores key value pairs. It means it can store JA and January both, so that later you can play around with the key instead of actual value. Now since it is generic, it means you can have key value of any data type. Let's see how to declare a dictionary. Where months equal to new dictionary of type int. Now this first data type states the data type of your key and a string which is the type of your value. Right now, this is an empty dictionary of type int and string. The first data type is for the key and the second data type is for the value. Let's see different ways of populating a dictionary with values. Let's use object initialization syntax. That's within curly bracket, we have to add the key value pairs. Again, each key value pair should be inside another curly bracket. Let's add one as key and value as January. Similarly, couple more. This is one way of adding values to a dictionary. You can even add items using the index notation. Your dictionary that's months, your key, let's give seven, equal to the value. Most often I prefer this. There is one more way to add value to a dictionary. That's via using add method. Months dot add your key and value. Let's add few more. Now let's debug this. Now 
So our dictionary has six items as of now. And finally, three more. One very important thing to note here, your dictionary key should be uniquely identifiable, which means you cannot add duplicate keys. Let me update the key for December as 11. Let's run it. See, it throws an exception. An item with the same key has already been added, which means you cannot have duplicate keys in a dictionary. Now let me show you another thing. Let's add a duplicate key using index notation. Months, key as 11 again. And let's give the value as December. Let me debug. See, with index notation, it did not throw an exception. But you know what? You have only 11 items in the dictionary. There is no November now. What does it mean? It means if you are adding items using index notation and if the key already exists in the dictionary, then it does not throw an exception, but instead it updates the value for that key. So depending on your requirement, you should choose the option that whether you want to use the add method or the index notation. Let's move to another topic. Dictionary keys are case sensitive. Let me create another dictionary. Here the key and value both are a string. Let me add couple of days. Now as discussed, we cannot have duplicate keys. It means definitely we cannot have this. As SUN key is already available in the dictionary. See, it throws an exception. Let's make S as capital. Let's run and see. See, it adds Tuesday. But do you think that it looks meaningful? I think at least for this requirement, keys being insensitive makes sense, right? Now, can we make it case insensitive? We can do this by passing a parameter to its constructor. Let me do that. String comparer dot ordinal ignore case. Now the runtime ignores the case. Hence, you cannot add keys with different case as well. It means your key becomes case sensitive. See, it throws an exception. Okay, now let's move to another topic. Let's see how can we retrieve values from a dictionary. For that, we have to use key as an index. It means variable name and our dictionary and inside square bracket the key. Now this will give us the value having key sun. See, we get Sunday. But what if the key is not available? Let me look up an item with key wet. See, it throws an key not found exception. The given key wet was not present in the dictionary. It means whenever we try to fetch value in a dictionary and the key is not available, then it throws an exception, which completely makes sense, right? But we don't like to see exception in our application, right? So is there a way we can avoid that? Yes, there is when it comes to dictionary. We should use try get value method of dictionary. Let's see how to use it. It takes a key and an out parameter which will get populated with the value in that key if key is available. And if key is not available, then the out parameter will be null. 
the return type is boolean true if the value is available and false if not let me give the key as wet let's debug see as you know the key is not available but it did not throw an exception hence it's a safer way of using a dictionary now the value of out parameter is null and the try get value method has returned false perfect let's look up for key sun see we get the value in our out parameter and also it returns true normally in real time we do something like this if days dot try get value our key and then the out parameter now if this returns true then you can safely use the value in the key do something with the value of sun now let's see one of the important thing that's enumerating a dictionary like any other collection you can enumerate a dictionary using for each loop let's see that for each key value pair in days dictionary now kvp is an object containing key and the value let's print the key and value kvp dot key and kvp dot value let's run this see we get all the keys and values in our dictionary you can even enumerate only keys for each key in days dot keys now it will loop through all the keys similarly you can enumerate only values as well let's move to another topic dictionary has two important methods to check if the key or a value is available that contains key and that is so you value. last one more thing on you dictionary. can basically do something like this if days dot contains key sun then do something here similarly we have contains value okay now let's see our last topic that's how to remove an item from a dictionary for that we can use the remove method days dot remove then pass in the key this will remove the value with the specified key from the given dictionary but if the key is not available then it will throw an exception so it is always recommended to check if the dictionary contains the key of the item that you want to remove so if days dot contains key sun then go ahead and remove the item let me debug and show you see sunday is not available anymore now if you want to remove all the items of a dictionary then use clear method days dot clear let me run it again see our dictionary is empty now that's all for this video i think this will be more than sufficient to get started with dictionary as i mentioned in my next video i'll show you how to have a key as a custom type in a dictionary 
If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe the channel and drop in your comments for all the future videos in C Sharp and other technologies. Thanks.